you don't believe in God and you don't believe in miracles, just swipe off the story in for you. But if you do believe in God, you know what, maybe if you don't believe in God, maybe this story is for you. So stick around for a second. It's a great story. This is a story of the most, one of the most insane miracles I've ever witnessed, if not the most insane miracle I've ever witnessed. And it is a miracle, an absolute bona fide miracle. So much so, God literally put his thumbprint on it. My wife became pregnant with twins. At 22 weeks, my wife goes to see the doctor and the doctor says the babies have what's called fetal growth restriction. Basically what it means is the umbilical cord and the placenta, they're not working so those babies aren't growing. Wife comes home, tells me, you know, she said, the doctor said they're going to take them out and put them in NICU and they'll put them in a, a you know, a, a whatever they put them in for a couple days and they usually pass away. My wife was heartbroken. She's bawling her eyes out. It just so happens I, I got this shofar from Israel. There it is. It's my shofar. And I said, listen, I'm, I'm going to go to the mountain. My wife's not a believer like I am in the same sense, not as strong. You know, I believe all of it. So I go to the mountain. I take the shofar and I blow it, you know. I ask God, I, I really go before the throne, I get down on my hands and knees, facing the dirt, shoes off, and I ask him, Lord, you know, this is going to destroy my wife, she's going to fall into depression, she's had bouts of depression, this is just going to ruin this little family, we have other kids, how do I fix this? And he said, in the spirit, I heard, bring it back to the garden. So I go home and I start researching medicines, I don't know what that meant, bring it back to the garden, I start researching on the National Institute of Health and PubMed on how to fix fetal growth restriction. Every drug they have, the side effect of the drug on the baby in the womb is worse than fetal growth restriction. I mean, how do you beat it? You can't beat it. So I go back to the mountain, I blow the shofar again, and I say, Lord, help me. How do I do this? You know, how do we do this? How, how, how can it be done? He said, make it as I made it. Now, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing and the honor of kings to search a thing out. Bring it back to how I made it. Natural. Bring it back natural. So I start looking up what foods do the things that these drugs do. Herbs, vegetables, high count mineral water. And I'm feeding my wife this stuff. So we go back to the doctors before the cesarean, the emergency cesarean. And the doctor says, well, baby A's placenta is working and her umbilical cord is working, but baby B's is not. Now, mind you, there were two separate eggs. Uh, not one egg split. They, were, they each individually had their own placenta, umbilical cord, their own sac. They came from individual eggs. So the doctor says, it's working. Baby A's working. Baby B's baseline. I don't expect it to stay that way. Fast forward to 38 weeks. 38 weeks, we're, we're going in for a C-section a week later, and the doctor brings us in her office, which we've never been in before, shows us a graph and says, well, baby A is fine, but baby B, although the placenta and umbilical cord are working, she never grew, so she's still, you know, that big. And she says, you know, we're going to do the cesarean, take her out, put her in EQ, see what happens. But they usually only live four or five days, and then they pass away. Now, mind you, my wife is bawling her eyes out right next to me. She's crying like, I mean, waterworks, man. She's, this, she's really hurt by this, you know. The doctor stops looking at my wife and looks at me and says, but I'm sure you'll go read a couple of books and be a professional with skeletal dysplasia in two days. So I'm not really worried about it because baby B has skeletal dysplasia and basically I mean she's a little person and she hasn't grown at all. I go back to the mountain, bring the seven tones of the voice of God, blow it, clear all the unclean spirits from the airways. And I say, Lord, what do I do? How do I do this? Why would you bring one and not the other? In an audible voice, I heard one milligram of melatonin. Okay. I go home, break down five milligram melatonin into five equal parts with olive oil, dissolved all as one, separated, and I'm giving her melatonin. The last week, my wife is screaming that she can't breathe. Her chest is feeling like it's going to explode. She's feeling like she's dying. Anyway, we go to the doctor's office, the hospital, C-section day. They open my wife up, and I watched. They took the babies out and they were both full term. So in a week, the baby went from this to 16.3 inches. Now here's where it gets really amazing. 
My children were born at 316 and 317. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should live and not perish. Their measurements were 16.3 inches, 17.3 inches. Hallelujah. Believe what you want, but God is still here. God is still with us. God is still for you. And if you truly believe with all your heart and you go to him and you ask him, he'll give you an answer. Your prayers will be heard. I don't really know how to end this, except that you can believe what you want, but at the end of the day, I'm believing Jesus.